Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm just going to take a closer look here. It's cloudy and rainy outside, so not a good day for shooting. Um, I'll just kind of go over what I got for equipment here. This is a Steyr SSG 69 P2. Um, it's an Iyer Valdata scope. Um, it's a mill mill scope. Then that means that uh, the turrets are in mills and the reticle is in mills, which is, for me, it seems like the easy way to do it. I'll explain why in a little bit, but uh, as far as what this thing is, um, you know, Harris bipod, 26 inch barrel. Um, this is actually a cheek piece off an HK91. And I found I needed that with the taller scope, scope rings. So, um, allegedly this thing was supposed to have come with a 20 MOA Picatinny base, and that's where I ran into some trouble. And it, uh, when I zeroed it for 100 meters and started shooting at the longer ranges, actually anything above probably about 800 meters, I started running out of elevation on the turret. Um, I took the Picatinny mount off, I mic'd it. It uh, it mics at zero MOA. So I don't know if uh, Steyr made the mount or it was a third party contractor that made the Picatinny rail. But to me, it uh, it does not have 20 MOA and that's why I'm, I'm running out of elevation. Now luckily, and this is a reason why you want to do this, I did it I like the metric system, so I did mill, mill. So what I have to do is, we'll show a close-up here of the uh, reticle here in a bit, but I can use holdovers that are built into the scope, and that can get me out probably at least to a 1,000, if not farther. So that was definitely a plus. So you saw me shooting it the other day. 900 meters in any kind of wind is a stretch, but shockingly with 168 grains, it does fairly well. Um, I think if it was still out, you could get uh, some pretty good hits. Um, I love the rifle. I really like the scope. I guess if I had any complaints about the scope, it would be that the magnification ring is really stiff, really hard to turn. Um, you're not going to bump that and knock it off, that's for sure. But the turrets are very large, easy to read. It has a zero stop ability. I like that. Yeah, no complaints. I think it's got really good glass. So, yeah, that's what we're running. We'll take a few close ups here in a minute. Okay, look at the magazine here. It's kind of a weird thing. You have to kind of pinch both sides of it to get it out. Um, I have mixed feelings on this. It's uh, kind of got the quality of like a 1980s Ramline magazine. Kind of cheesy. And they're not cheap. They're like 70 bucks. It works fine. It's kind of, it's nice. It's flush. Almost like a 1022 magazine. But uh, like I said, it kind of got a cheesy feel to it. And, uh, but it does work. I, uh, haven't tried any of the 10-rounders. They're really expensive. They're like 150 bucks. And they stick out, obviously. But, one feature of the rifle. Okay, this is one of the sheets that came with the scope. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it's a IR Valdata. Uh, three and a half to 18 power scope, 35 millimeter tube, um, and uh, it's in mill mill, and it's got an MP8 style reticle. And then, like I mentioned before, how for some reason that uh, scope base doesn't have the 20 MOA, I believe it should have, so I'm having to run out of come ups in the turret of the scope. Now, that's no fault of the scope. It's more of a fault of the uh, scope base. But since it is in, the turrets are a mill, and the reticle is in mill, 
what I have to do is if I'm shooting like the other day you saw in the video I'm shooting at 900 meters um, I use uh, the reticle and then I also hold up to in that case I was shooting at 900 so right in that uh, between this five a little over the hash mark over the five was right where I needed to be if it was more wind or less wind it might be a tick more or a tick less right in that ballpark so that's a, a reason I mean I'm not just being a proponent for the metric system if you have an MOA scope you want to have MOA turrets otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of math or missing a lot it's whatever you choose but I like the metric system it seems to me it's simple um, it's everything's meters kilometers um, it just seems to work without doing a lot of math in your head and these are some of the specs on here I don't know if we can see this on the scope but definitely it seems to work for me now I was shooting 168 grains the other day um, in a perfect world you'd probably shoot 175s at that range but I'm not sure but I think this rifle's got a 1 in 12 twist and I tried shooting a buddy's 175s and yeah they didn't seem to do so hot so it does great with 168s and 900 to 1000 meters is really stretching it for a 308 anyway so I guess I'm not too concerned about it So that's kind of a quick overview of the rifle. Probably not the best video in the world, but kind of give you an idea of what we're shooting with here. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye.